guys, uh, I'm Alex Martinez, and I'm here to teach you something about Taylor polynomials and the Lagrange form of the remainder. So I understand that uh, you've already been taught this by the teachers, so I'm not starting from straight nothing, because that's important since I'm probably not going to be as good as them, but we might as well go ahead and give it a try. So we know when we're making a Taylor polynomial, we are going to have multiple degrees to it, right? We're going to have uh, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, like really whatever, but like we're not going to go too crazy, right? Because that'd be insane. So the general form, whenever we make a polynomial, is this. Uh, please forgive my handwriting. I mean, I'm not an artist necessarily. I'm a math guy, okay? Give me a break. So this is our general thing. Whatever the, uh, oopsies. Whatever the <clears throat> constant is, if you plug in x into the derivative to the nth derivative, times x minus c to the n over n factorial. All right, so the next part of this video is also gonna be about the Lagrange form of the remainder. Personally, not a type of uh, math problem I like doing, but we all gotta do some math we don't like sometimes, right? So, the equation for this formula is... M represents the biggest number that could come out of the next term and the Taylor polynomial. I know that sounds pretty dumb, but I'll explain it later when I do an example. n plus one would just be, you're taking the factorial of the next, um, the next n, I guess, and then absolute value, because perhaps the uh, number you're approximating, your c could be greater than x or less than x, so we just keep the absolute value and then raise it to the n plus one in order to get our answer. Now, I'm personally not one who likes to do it understands things just from looking at an equation. That just doesn't help me at all. I learned by practicing, so I'll give you guys a practice problem. Be right back. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, a bunch of equations don't make sense to me. Maybe they make sense to you, but um, I just like to do examples. So I have an example here on the board. I've also got it figured out on this piece of paper so I don't look too dumb while I'm trying to do it for you. So let's remind ourselves what the equation for each term in Taylor polynomial would be. And in this case, we'll say c equals 0, just for the sake of making this problem easier. So, first thing we would do is try to find f of 0. f of 0, oh my gosh, that's gross, it's okay. If we plug in a 0 all the way through, we just get 3. I think you guys can figure that out. You guys are pretty advanced at math, I've noticed. If we take the derivative of f of x, so f prime of x, we get 35x to the 4 plus 16x to the 4. 3 minus 18x squared plus 2. And then if we take f prime of 0, we get 2. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the function each time and go deeper and deeper, and then plug in 0 for all the x's in order to find our leading coefficient, our f to the n of x. And that's what I'm doing here, but I just wanted to fast forward not to bore you guys. <laughs> So, you put this here in front, this means fourth degree Taylor polynomial, at least that's how I've always written it, and we know it is 3 to, so this is a f to the 0, I guess, like derivative, the 0th derivative, don't think about it too much, but uh, since it's the 0th derivative, n would be 0, so we're not going to have an x, so just 3. Then next, we go to the first derivative, so that would be when n is 1. So then we end up with 2x over 1 factorial, because in this case, in the first derivative, n is 1. After that, we go to the next one. We have a 0 as our coefficient times x squared over 2 factorial, but this will be 0. We can see that. Next, 36x cubed over 3 factorial, and finally, 96 x to the 4th over 4 factor. And then, normally these are x minus c's, however, I didn't want to write x minus 0 on each one, so I feel like I can just simplify it to x each time for convenience. So this right here would be our new 4th degree Taylor polynomial. 
for this equation. Around, or centered at x equals 0, or c equals 0. All right, so next we're doing the Lagrange part. We'll find the remainder, and we will try approximating at point 1. So uh, we centered it at 0, but now we're going to approximate from point 1. So we'll just get rid of that for right now. So just a reminder, this is our fourth degree Taylor polynomial. This is our original uh, function that we were given. And then this here was just the fourth degree. I kept it on there because we'll need it for this. So once again, we'll remind ourselves of uh, the equation for the Lagrange form of the remainder. Now again, the M, it's kind of mysterious, kind of dumb, but it's there. So uh, M is always going to be greater than or equal to the... Uh, the value we find when we plug our estimated or our, uh, our testing answer into the next degree of our polynomial. I know it's a little whack, but it's whatever. So that'd be p of 5 of c, in this case, this. As I was saying, we need to define the fifth derivative of f of x. So here I have it written out. If we just take the derivative of this, it comes out to 840. And m is greater than, if you plug in c to the fifth derivative, sorry, I think last time I had this as the fifth uh, degree Taylor polynomial, but it's just the fifth degree. So if we plug that in, we get 840, so m has to be greater than or equal to 840. And make it all work. So we want to be as close to 840 as possible, so why not just do 840? Making 8m 8 840, we can plug it into our Lagrange formula. And we get 4 plus 1 factorial, which I know it's 5. I know, you know, we're both math people, right? So we've plugged in the 840 into the m, and then we have the 4 plus 1 and the 5. So if we're going to multiply all this stuff together off the top of your head, come on, somebody. Oh, I got it, don't worry. It's about 7 over 100,000. That is how far off we are from the actual answer when we plug point 0.1 into this equation versus into this equation. And that is what Taylor polynomials are really used for. They're sort of used to represent another equation. And the more degrees we have, the more accurate it will be. And I don't know if you noticed this, but like just look, we're kind of building this equation from the back. We have a 3, 3, 2x, 2x, 36x cubed over 3 factorial. Well, that simplifies to 6x cubed. And if we kept going like to the next one, it would all work out the same. Last thing, some of you guys may have noticed my cuts counter here. This includes all cuts to the video, as well as bloopers that I've made, and my camera running out of storage. So, uh, we're at 9 right here. I think, to finish this off, we can add a 10th cut. That's all I have to say, and bye bye The N plus 1. Where? We'll go ahead and erase that one.